Hey guys, Mr. P. In this video, we're going to talk about water as the medium for life, specifically new IB understanding A111. This understanding states that students should appreciate that the first cells originated in water and that water remains today the medium in which most processes of life occur. And so what does that mean? Well, water is essential to life. And so we need to understand why water is such an important and fundamental property of life. And we're gonna begin our discussion about how the earth looked a long time ago in its origin and how earth looks now. So the primordial planet earth looked very different than it does today. In fact, it, it produced a ton of heat. And so no water was present on the primordial earth, basically earth at its origin due to extremely high temperatures at its center and on its surface. And so because this earth was so hot, it did not allow for water to exist in any of its states, specifically speaking liquid, gas, or solid like it does now. And so earth had to cool in order for water to begin to form uh, from its physical properties, that is oxygen and hydrogen. And not only did it have to form, it had to cool to allow that water to solidify from gas and remain in its states uh, in order for that, that water cycle to begin. And so the origin and evolution of the first cells could not have begun until temperatures cooled enough for water to form. Once that water formed, the water cycle had to start, and once that water cycle started, it was maintained in order to allow that water to not only form gas, liquid, and solid, but it had to have sufficient temperatures in order to cause those water molecules to transfer between those phases, which obviously gives rise to a lot of different properties that, that we now take advantage of on planet Earth. And so the first cells are believed to have evolved in Earth's oceans. Once the water was formed, and the gravitational pull of our current planet allowed the, the liquid water to remain at the surface and not just kind of float away. It gave rise to actual bodies of liquid water, like lakes, ponds, oceans. And those oceans acquired all of the necessary nutrients and minerals in order to give rise to those first cells, which we know were prokaryotic, okay? And then once those prokaryote cells evolved into unicellular eukaryotes, they then began to evolve into multicellular eukaryotes, which eventually became all of the living things that we currently know and take advantage of on the planet Earth, like fish, birds, amphibians, reptiles, mammals. So why is water such a good solvent? Now, in later videos, we're going to talk about the different properties of water, like polarity, cohesion, adhesion, solvency, those kinds of things. But this is an introductory video, and so we're gonna talk about why water and how water is such a good solvent. Water makes up the fluid, which is the cytoplasm, in all cells where cellular reactions occur. A lot of the cellular reactions like the Krebs cycle, the cellular energetic processes, photosynthesis, catabolic, anabolic reactions, all of those take place in the presence of enzymes. Those enzymes are going to be dissolved as the solutes within the solvent, which is water, and those enzymes are going to be housed in the fluids of these particular cells. And so a lot of the cytoplasm is going to be conducive to a lot of those metabolic processes but even within individual organelles, like the mitochondria, the chloroplast, the Golgi, endoplasmic reticulum, the nucleus, ribosomes, all of those things are going to have fluids that are going to be conducive to certain metabolic processes. Those fluids primarily are made up of water. Water is also found between cells of multicellular organisms, specifically tissue cells. We are eukaryotic, and so we're made up of multiple different types of somatic cells. Those somatic cells touch each other and have specific areas between different tissue types. Water is found in these particular fluids between these particular tissue cells. Water permits transport of substances into and out of the cells, whether we're talking diffusion, facilitated diffusion, active transport, or uh, ion pumping. All of them require that the solute that will be transported be dissolved in solvents like water. All of the fluids within these particular areas of the cell are, are composed of water. And so the transport processes that are moving the solutes within these fluids and uh, across membranes from cytoplasm into and out of different organelles requires water to be the solvent. Water is also an essential component to blood and many other bodily fluids in humans and other organisms. When we look at the composition of blood, 
Blood is primarily made up of water. The plasma is the solvent or is the solution that all blood contents are uh, dissolved in. And so these components would be things like red blood cells, platelets, white blood cells, uh, glucose, and a variety of the other components like ions are all dissolved in the fluid that is plasma, which keeps the blood fluid and allows it to flow through all of our arteries, veins, and capillaries. One of the most important components of water in terms of the earth on a global scale provides the medium in which all organisms in oceans, lakes, and rivers live. So fish and other aquatic organisms are able to live in aquatic environments, specifically water, even though water is out in the sun for most of the day, depending on the environment that it's in, it withstands a lot of energy transfer and doesn't withstand or see significant temperature changes. All of that will be talked about in more detail in later videos, but for now, know that water provides the medium in which all organisms that are aquatic live in, specifically oceans, lakes, and, and rivers. That's it for this particular video. If you learned something, give it a thumbs up. Leave any questions in the comments turn on the notification bell, subscribe to the channel. We'll see ya.